Welcome to ourhappydogs.com. Thank you, Tim. Thanks for having me. If you'd like to share for the viewers a little bit about yourself and your history. Okay. And your involvement with the raw food industry. Okay, well, hi guys. Um, I'm Dr. Riley Fishburn. Uh, Tim's kindly invited me to, to come and have a, a few words with him about what I do and, and kind of what I do with my dogs and why. So I run Kachina Canine Communication. It's a bit long-winded. I apologise for that. Um, I, I, I guess I'm a, a canine, a canine wellness practitioner, holistic canine behaviourist, um, if that's what you want to call me. I, I look at dogs slightly differently. Um, I look at the emotional well-being of a dog. I look at wellness. And what wellness is, it looks at the, the emotional, the, the physiological and the physical needs and aspects of a dog and actually how they're all interrelated. So we kind of see a dog as, as kind of like a, a unit, but the dog is an organism, a whole organism. And it's, it's looking at, at what makes up that dog and um, the emotional needs of that animal, as I said, the physical needs and the and the, the spiritual needs and the, the mental needs of that of that individual. Um, and I look at if a dog has a particular behaviour problem or a dog has um, maybe a physical problem, um, what is the cause of that and why and how we can address it. Now that might be simply the emotional state of that animal, looking at the emotional state of that dog. It could be the food that you give that dog, that plays a big part into a dog's wellness. Um, and it's really looking at making a dog feel safe, making a dog happy, making a dog loving, loving everyday life. Okay. That's it in a nutshell. <coughs> We've got some questions from some of our website users okay. about the raw food. Too controversial. There's, there's not a great deal of understanding about it. Okay. Nobody seems to know the pros, cons, should they, shouldn't they, and how do they. Okay. So I'll fire some of these questions at you and okay. you can put everybody at Make ease. Make them easy. Question one. Yeah. Why would I change and what benefit is there over my Hills dried food? Okay. This is from Jackie. Okay, from Jackie. Okay. Thanks for the really hard question, Jackie. Um, so it's a really, really good question. And um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. A lot of when I go out to see dogs, majority of dogs are actually still fed a very a, a commercial based mm. product of commercial based food. And, and for me, it's, it's a cause for concern. Um, now it, it's it's not just it's it's not necessarily just as easy to say oh to put the dog on raw because there is a right way of feeding the dog raw and a wrong way and for me it is about educating the right way compared to the wrong way and there are a very small minority of dogs that actually just cannot have raw food but what I would look at next is then something that's called fresh food so the food is cooked for that dog doesn't mean you go to the supermarket and get kibble or, or a tin dog food mm. you cook it for your dog yourself um, now how, how, how would you know the raw food isn't suitable and that dog needs the fresh food um, would it be a bad reaction it would normally be um, sickness and diarrhea for longer than 24 hours um, the dog will generally look unwell um, Normally, the normally if you're then to get to get a sensitivity test and intolerance test done, then that will give an indication of whether the dog can have can have raw or not. But it is very very few dogs. But again, there are some dogs that just can't have a raw food diet. But for me, I would then move on to a fresh food as opposed to a food that has really it's kind of been cooked to a point where there's no life left in it. So one of the things that I always talk about. Um, and get people to understand about when we're feeding the dog is what's called life energy. We, in order for any individual to have energy and to feel alive, it's really important what goes inside of them. Mm. And that needs to also have an energy itself. So when I say life energy, the food, or the food has to be live, I don't mean it has to be alive, but it has to have vibrancy and resonance and energy. If you think about, you know, salads and peppers and, 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 and meat that looks healthy and well, that's what we want to consume. That's what a dog needs to be consuming. Um, for me personally, what I find with your, your commercial foods, your, your kind of kibbles, is that they're just dead, they're stagnant, and they are, not, they are not supporting that animal in terms of how it should function. So what we might think of, you know, you might have an eight-year-old dog that's been fed a kibble-based diet for all of its life, and there's no problems. How do we know that? Maybe the dog has recurrent ear infections. Maybe the dog has itchy skin. Maybe the dog's nails don't grow. Maybe its hair doesn't grow as long as it should. These things that maybe we wouldn't notice as such. <coughs> but also what happens with a diet is it's about longevity. So you are not going to see a difference of a dog being intolerant to something overnight. It's going to happen as, these, as, as basically this, this dead food is put into the animal for longer, longer periods. 
Um, so for me, it is about this life energy food. And given the, given the animal a food that is supporting it to function as a dog should. Now, what that largely involves is a dog as a canine. And there's a massive debate at the moment about, well, is a dog a carnivore? And that's a totally different subject in itself because that is really open to debate. What is recommended, what is agreed at the moment is that a dog is a faculty of carnivore. So basically means it should have meat, but it can exist on other things. Um, but in terms of when looking at, okay, what does a dog or what does a canine need to allow it to thrive, to allow it to function? And when I mean function, we're talking about at a cellular level. It's our cells that make up as an organism. And because we can't physically see those cells unless we look at them under a microscope, we kind of th we forget that, that is, that's what's so important. Us operating at a cellular level is so important, so it's about optimising health and wellness at a cellular level. We're feeding our cells with the right fats, the right nutrients, the right vitamins that we're not going to get from food that's cooked until it's dead, until it's meat's defunct. Um, so dogs really need proteins from muscle meat. It's a muscle meat that is going to support them functionally. Um, they need bones. They need to have the right amount of fats. There's a debate about do dogs need fruit and vegetables. I'm a big fan of dogs having fruit and vegetables because they contain lots of phytonutrients, you know. Um, food is medicine. There's a whole mm. load of, of, of papers, of books out there saying about food is medicine. And it is. Plants are medicine as well. Mm. So I think supporting, giving our dogs support by giving them vegetables, giving them fruit. Again, the right fruit or the right vegetables. Dogs that have yeast problems, I would say avoid sugary things. So in that situation, I'd say, do you know what? Don't give your dog fruit because of the sugars be careful of your sugary vegetables like carrots and things like that um, and I think for me when I talk about putting a dog onto a raw food diet I make it individualized so you have individualized medicine or we should have individualized medicine we also should have individualized food for our dogs because each dog is different so in our house my dogs get slightly different foods because they're individuals one dog needs something different to what my other dog needs um, so that's kind of what I focus on as well. And then with that, there are supplements <coughs> that you can give that I might give on a weekly basis, like raw eggs. You can give cooked eggs. Raw eggs are really good. Different oils. You might want to vary your fish oils with your vegetable oils in terms of, oh, sorry, plant oils, such as your hemp or your linseed. Um, you can give your dogs, um, you can give your dog yogurt and cheese. It's better to give them dairy from sheep or goat rather than cattle, just mm. because a lot of dogs are intolerant to dairy in that way. Um, so there, there is a lot of intolerance things coming out as well, and that's because, unfortunately, a lot of dogs that are fed kibble-based diet tend to be chicken or beef, and because it, it causes, because of how it interacts with the digestive system, it causes intolerances, which then make the dog intolerances to that meat source in general. Um, and what, for me, is vitally important when we look at wellness, when we look at wellness for, the, for a canine, or of a canine, mm -hmm. um, you know, we've got to realise that, that we're all mammals. So what applies for humans really applies for a dog, really applies for a goat, really applies for an elephant, anything that's a mammal. We, the, the digestive system is largely makes up our immune system. So when we feed the gut, we're actually feeding our body and we're feeding our immune system. And if the gut isn't healthy, then the body is not going to be healthy.